Hey guys, welcome to video 52. Today we're going to take a closer look at the distortion characteristics of the enhancement mode MOSFET. The circuit we'll be working with is shown here. It's a voltage divider biased common source amplifier with complete source bypassing. The device we'll be working with experimentally today is the 2N7000, so its transconductance curve is shown over here. This is a little bit different than the curves for the 2N7000 we've used previously. I wanted to be very accurate and precise in the experimental portion of this presentation, so I sat down and did some precise measurements on a 2N7000 and this is the curve I got. Uh, the K value is 0 0.022 and the threshold or turn on voltage is 1.2 volts. Now something I haven't mentioned previously, I thought this would be a good point uh, to bring it up, is that we normally assume VDS is constant when we're using this curve to design or analyze a circuit. That's not really true, especially for a circuit like this, because when we apply a signal, it causes VDS to change, and that can affect this curve. Now, we're not normally going to account for that, but it's something to keep in mind that can affect your experimental results a little bit. Okay, now, what happens when we apply a signal to this amplifier? Well, we've used this voltage divider to establish our Q point here at 1.62 volts in this case. And as Vn goes positive, our drain current increases. And when Vn goes negative, our drain current decreases. But it follows along this nonlinear parabolic path. So we're going to get a distorted drain current waveform as shown over here. We get this stretching and squashing of the waveform that's caused by this parabola. Now, when we do a small signal analysis and we determine the voltage gain at the Q point, we normally assume that transconductance remains constant. And if that were the case, then our drain current would follow along this straight line. Okay, it's the tangent point to the curve at our Q point. And notice that as Vn changes equal amounts above and below uh, VGSQ, that our drain current would increase linearly uh, right along with that. In other words, as VGS increased from 1.62 to 1.82, our drain current would increase from 4 milliamps to 8 milliamps. Likewise, as our VGS varies from 1.62 down to 1.42 volts, our drain current should drop to zero but it doesn't. Remember, our curve is actually causing the drain current to deviate away from this small signal linear approximation. Now, what I want to do next is derive an equation that accurately describes this output waveform. Well, not exactly this waveform. That's the drain current waveform. We're after V out, but remember V out equals negative ID times R prime D. So the output waveform is just going to be an inverted and scaled version of this one. All right, if we go on over to the next page, you'll see what I mean. Here's our small signal model and the input and output waveforms that we would see for this circuit. All right, we're going to start here by taking the drain current equation and substituting in VGS equals VGSQ plus VN. And I'm going to rearrange the terms a little bit to make things nicer to work with, and you'll see why in a second. So what we've got to begin with is I sub D equals K times VGSQ minus V sub TO. I'm going to lump those together plus VN the quantity squared. Okay, I can combine these because they're both DC terms. They'll reduce to a single value. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is expand out the quadratic, and that gives us K times VGSQ minus V sub TO plus VN times VGSQ minus V sub TO plus VN. All right, we'll multiply these out using the FOIL method. All right, so that gives us K times uh, first times first is going to give us VGS Q minus V sub T O, the quantity squared. All right, the outside terms multiplied together gives us VN times VGS 
Q minus V sub T O. And the inner terms, well, they're the same as this one, so let's just put a 2 here. And lastly, we get plus V in squared. All right, now let's distribute the K through here. And that gives us K times VGS Q minus V sub T O squared plus V in times 2K VGS Q minus V sub T O plus K times V in squared. All right, now this looks pretty messy and ugly, and you might be thinking, well, where are we going from here? But there are a couple things to notice. Number one, K times VGS Q minus VTO squared is just IDQ. And 2K VGS Q minus VTO is the transconductance. So what we've got is IDQ plus GM times V in. This is uh, the normal analysis that we've done. We get, you know, the transconductance times V in is the AC drain current, and we've got a quiescent drain current, plus we've got K times V in squared. That's our extra term here. All right, now our output voltage, remember, is negative ID times R prime D. So V out would be negative this times R prime D, except remember that the output coupling capacitor blocks this DC term. So we're just going to have these two terms as our output voltage. And what we get is V out equals negative GM times R prime D times V in minus K times R prime D times V in squared. Now, notice that this first term, negative GM times R prime D, that's voltage gain. So we can also write this as V out equals AV times V in minus K R prime D V in squared. All right, now we're going to take a closer look at this squared term here for a second. So let me clear the decks and uh, make some room. We're almost there. Uh, we're going to copy this equation up top here and remember that that is V out. All right, and in order to do uh, some reduction on this last term, we need to use a trigonometric identity. So V in is VP sine omega t, and what we need is V in squared. So uh, VP sine omega t the quantity squared is given by the following trigonometric identity. It's going to give us VP squared over 2 minus VP squared over 2 times the cosine of 2 omega t. So when we square this sine wave, we get out a DC term and an inverted cosine waveform that's twice the original frequency. All right, now something that happens here is that this is a DC term and that's going to get blocked by our coupling capacitor. So we don't need to worry about that. We're just going to carry over this inverted cosine. And what we get then is V out equals AV times V in. And since we're subtracting a negative, we're going to have plus K R prime D VP squared over two times the cosine of 2 omega t. And there's our output voltage equation uh, for the actual circuit that accounts for the nonlinearity of the MOSFET. Now, as always, I'm not going to leave you hanging with my re messy writing here. I'm going to give you a nice version of the derivation. Here it is. And, of course, I did it slightly differently when I sat down and typed it out. But, essentially, it's the same procedure. And there you go. Now, I did design the circuit. And I set up a cue point with the same drain current that I used on the very first page of this presentation. Uh, if you want to do a hand analysis, here are the equations for the quadratic formula and so on your DC and AC load line output compliance, and of course our new complete output voltage equation. Theoretically, um, the circuit should have come up with 4 milliamps. It actually was 4.1. Uh, 
Our VDS should have been 7.6, it's 7.4. VGS 1.63 versus 1.7. The gain theoretically was minus 22. We actually got a bit more at minus 27. And our output maximum and minimum voltage uh, clipping levels came out to be a little bit better than the theoretical predictions. Now, I'm going to move down to the slide underneath here. And uh, shown on the left is the Desmos uh, graph that I used to establish my Q point. This is my transconductance equation. This is the equation for the ID times RS line. And we can see our Q point is 4 milliamps and 1.63 volts for VGS. Now, this upper trace on the left here is uh, what I used to determine the uh, small signal voltage gain. I put in a signal of about 100 millivolts peak to peak. We got out about 3 volts peak to peak. There's not too much distortion showing, but there is a bit because notice my maximum output voltage is 1.42 and my minimum, that is the bottom, is negative 1.59. So we are getting a bit of distortion already here. Uh, the bottom uh, output is what I got to uh, establish my clipping points experimentally, and we can see we reach 5.31 on the top clipping point and minus 6.8 volts for the negative going clipping points. Now, I probably should have set up the oscilloscope so that the amplitude scale over here correlated to the output signal instead of the input signal, but we still have all of the output signal parameters we're interested in over here, peak-to-peak -peak volts, Vmax, Vmin, frequency, and so on. So it's all good. I just hope next time around I remember to do that. All right, now let's go back up to our original circuit here. And what I did next was apply an input signal, Vn equals 0 0.2 sine omega t volts. That is 0.2 volts peak or 400 millivolts peak to peak sine wave. And I set the frequency to 1 kilohertz, which is our standard test frequency. So let's go on over to the next page. And what we have here is our small signal AC equivalent circuit with the input voltage shown. Here's our output voltage equation. And when we plug in all the parameters, what we should get out is V out equals negative 4.4 sine omega t volts. That's our fundamental. Plus 0.53 cosine 2 omega t volts. That's our second harmonic. All right, let's go down and take a look at the oscilloscope trace and see what it looks like. Okay, I brought down the uh, calculated values, and here's what we get on the scope. This blue waveform is our input. It's about 400 millivolts peak to peak. The yellow waveform is the output. We can see it's reaching a maximum value of about 4.42 volts, a minimum value of a min about minus 6.4 volts. So we're actually kind of close to clipping here. We're not there yet, but we're getting pretty darn close. Now over here is our output signal spectrum and the fundamental at 1 kilohertz has an amplitude of about 3.5 volts RMS. Uh, the second harmonic at 2 kilohertz has an amplitude of about 750 millivolts RMS. So let's convert those to peak values here. Uh, 3.5 volts RMS times the square root of 2 is a peak voltage of about 4.9 volts. So this should be 4.9 volts peak. Our second harmonic has an amplitude of 750 millivolts, so that's 0.75 times the square root of 2 is about 1 volt peak. 1 volt peak. All right, and here is our theoretical calculation. We expected 4.4 volts peak, we got a little bit more. But remember, the gain of the amplifier was actually a little higher than we expected, so that makes sense. And we expected 0.53 volts peak out for our second harmonic, we got 1 volt peak. That means that the amplifier is actually behaving a little bit more nonlinear than we expected. Although I'm not surprised because we are pretty close to clipping and that's going to cause a little bit more distortion of these peaks. And that is likely 
uh, going to make this peak bigger. Now if we actually had gone into clipping then we'd have a whole bunch of more harmonics popping up out here. We'd have a lot more terms in our V-out expression and you know, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, so as long as we don't drive our amplifier into clipping this equation gives us a a pretty reasonably accurate estimate of what we should get out of it and that's not too bad all right now let's go back up to our circuit here and suppose we just analyze it on paper and this is what we came out with you sit here and you look at this and you go well okay how do I wrap my head around that uh, I don't know that's pretty tough I don't know many people that can visualize equations like this uh, but Fortunately, we have graphic software available now that makes this stuff really straightforward. So let's, let's plot this equation in Desmos just to see what it looks like, okay? So what we're looking for here is y equals negative 4.4 sine, and let's just go with t, okay? We won't scale the frequency. That's not too important here. So here's our sine wave. All right, it's starting at zero crossing going negative because we do have a minus sign here. And it's reaching an amplitude of 4.4 volts. All right, now let's add in our uh, second harmonic here. So we're going to have plus 0 0.53 cosine. And because it's twice the frequency, we'll just multiply t times 2. So that's 2t. And there we go. So we've got this equation graphed and you can see we do get the squashing and stretching and we can go down and compare that with our oscilloscope trace just for kicks let's see what it looks like down here okay so here's Desmos here's our scope trace that's a pretty good correlation I'm pretty happy with that uh, we're reaching minus and well minus 4.93 the oscilloscope was showing minus six so okay not quite there our positive peak here is 3.87 the oscilloscope was showing 4.42 okay so eh, still not bad okay and uh, there you go that's it for today's video I hope this one was uh, pretty entertaining and got some cool information from it I think next time around we'll take a look at bipolar transistors and do a little comparison but uh, until then, I'll see you next time.